There's something about the Psalms I really love. You know, I love the honesty of it, the rawness. You know, it's something childlike. Uh, when you say he's brutally honest. They are prayers. They are prophetic prayers. It's not just poetry, but it's poetry on fire. You know, so when you put a melody to something like the Lord is my rock, my strength, my shield, my strong tower, you know that heaven is agreeing with you. The Psalms were intended for corporate use and when you sing straight from the word, you're not only singing to Jesus, but you are singing Jesus because He is the word and He is perfect theology. be at a dead end of pain and sickness, a destination to hopelessness. But Jesus' death on the cross is not past, it is present continuous. That breaks these roadblocks of pain, sickness, Satan and death. Greetings. Thank you so much for joining us today on this telecast of Living Strong. As always, we are delighted and grateful for the opportunity to be able to come your way and bring God's Word to you and also to spend some time with, with you in prayer. Uh, we'd be delighted to hear from you uh, how the simple teaching of the Word of God is enriching your life, uh, inspiring you, opening up the, the Word of God to you uh, so that you can live victorious. Uh, take a few moments, please, and just write to us. The email will be on your screen. Send us an email, uh, it'll help, and it'll help us know how these telecasts are being a blessing to you. All these weeks, we're talking about the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Uh, as we said in an earlier telecast, the last word that Jesus said uh, on that cross was teleo in Greek, uh, which in English, of course, it is translated, it is finished. And we've uh, mentioned earlier that when Jesus said, uh, used that particular word, teleo, uh, that word uh, in, its, in, in the Greek um, uh, has a threefold connotation. It could be used in one of three ways. One, it, it, it's about talking about the completion of bringing an end, bringing a finish to something, uh, that this is the closure of that. It's the end and the finish of that. Um, uh, secondly, it can also refer to the completion of an order or a command that had been issued. Uh, but now everything in relation to that is completed. The work is done. The job is finished. It's completed. It, can also have, it also has to do with a debt uh, that once was owed but now has been fully paid. It's completed, completely paid, or a tribute that had to be given, that was completely given. So we're talking about, when Jesus is saying it is finished, we're talking about the closure of something, we're talking about the completion of something, we're talking about the cancellation of something. Uh, and so when Jesus is saying it is finished, it's, a, it's the sound of a triumphant declaration that a work has been done. Uh, it's the closure uh, of, of the fall uh, of man that would hold people uh, in its grip. Uh, but now people are able to come out of that. It's a completion of everything God the Father wanted Jesus Christ to do for us on, uh, through his life, death, and resurrection. Uh, it's a completion of that. And it's also the cancellation of all our debt that we owe because of our sin uh, that came in because of Adam's fall. And so when Jesus said it is finished and he's completed that work, uh, he died, he was buried, he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he's now glorified, uh, he is the eternal word. Uh, he is seated at the right hand of the Father in all of His glory. Uh, and what would Jesus desire for us? He would want us to live out 
of that completed work. So whatever he did for us on the cross, it's not just something we, you know, uh, once a year look back and say, you know, Jesus died for us 2,000 years ago. But no, we live out of that finished work every day in our lives. We, uh, we uh, walk in the fullness of the benefits or the blessings of that completed work. And that's what we are challenging us to do. In our early telecast, we talked about how we have victory over sin because of the completed work of Christ on the cross. We also touched upon in our uh, second telecast how we have victory over sickness because of the completed work of Christ on the cross. And of course, we could spend hours on each of these topics uh, because there's so much there in the New Testament that, that, uh, uh, that teaches this to us. Uh, but on the telecast today, the third in the series, uh, we want to talk about the fact that we have victory over Satan and all of his demonic powers because of the finished work of Christ on the cross. Uh, you know, when Jesus was about to go to the cross, he foretold many things uh, of what would happen on the cross. In fact, back in the garden, even uh, uh, we're going all the way back to the garden, and in, in, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, when God the Father was speaking, he said that the seed of the woman would, would bruise the head of the serpent. When you're talking about bruising somebody's head, you're talking about dealing a fatal blow, a crushing blow, a, a, a death blow uh, to uh, the opponent. So Jesus would bruise the head of the serpent, meaning Satan would be crushed. Uh, and that, of course, took place on the cross. So when Jesus was going to the cross, he mentioned several things. For instance, he said in John 12, verses 31 to 33, he said, Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And of course, he was referring to the cross. And so he says, when he would be saying, when he was going to die on the cross, he was going to cast out Satan, meaning dethrone him, uh, displace him. Satan had gained uh, mastery over the human race because of what Adam did. Uh, now Satan was in control, but he's going to be cast out of that place of authority over man uh, when Jesus died on the cross. He's going to be displaced from that. He's going to be cast out of that. As even uh, Secondly, in John 16, Jesus said, verse 11, because the ruler of this world is judged. Again, this was all in reference to the cross, what he would finish on the cross, and what the Holy Spirit would come to administer to us. And he's saying the ruler of this world is judged. And the word judge there is a, is a judicial word, uh, really meaning that the ruler of this world, Satan, was now condemned uh, and sentenced. Uh, the verdict was pronounced and Satan has been judged. He's condemned. He's been sentenced. You know, so uh, uh, that work was done. Satan was declared that he's been condemned. And Jesus said, because of the cross, Satan is judged. He's condemned. He, uh, he's dealt uh, 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 a final uh, blow to the court. Um, then in Colossians 2, verse 14 and 15, the apostle Paul teaches us that when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he disarmed principalities and powers and he triumphed over them on the cross. So Jesus totally uh, destroyed or, uh, or triumphed over Satan and all of his demonic powers. And then in Hebrews 2 and verse 14, uh, again here the writer of Hebrews says that through his death, Jesus Christ destroyed the one who had the power of death. I want you to think about all of this with me. Did the Lord Jesus Christ need to do any of this for himself? You know, he was and is the eternal word. Before he became incarnate man, he was almighty God. Uh, Satan was a non-entity as far as God was concerned. Uh, you know, just doesn't matter. Uh, uh, and so God was on his throne. Jesus was on his throne, the eternal word of God. Uh, and uh, he didn't have to... Uh, deal with Satan in this manner. He didn't have to fight. He could just totally destroy him. But he went through the process of dying and becoming a man and dying on the cross. And as a man representing the human race, triumphing over Satan. Now, why did he do that? He didn't do it for himself. He did it for you and me, people. He did it for us. The reason he battled Satan, so to speak, was not for himself, but for you and me. So everything Jesus did in casting Satan out, in crushing Satan's head, in uh, having Satan condemned, uh, in uh, 
disarming principalities and powers and triumphing over them in destroying Satan. Everything he did, he did it for you and me, representing man, representing you and me. And the Bible tells us in Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, the 12th verse, that Jesus would share his spoil with the strong. That means uh, it's like a conqueror. After he's conquered his enemy, his triumph is enjoyed by all his subjects, by all the people that he's ruling over. He shares the spoil with the strong. So Jesus shared the spoil, his triumph, his victory. He shares that with us. And that's how we have our strength over the enemy. So what I want to bring to bear on your heart today is that on the cross, Jesus triumphed over Satan and every demon power. Every evil spirit was conquered with this armed for you and me so that you and I could now walk in authority, in dominion and victory over Satan and every evil spirit. That's what the Bible tells us. Uh, in Romans 16, verse 20, the Apostle Paul says, The God of peace will crush Satan underneath your feet. That's the position of the believer, that he would walk in authority. He would trample over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. That's what Jesus wants for us to do. He wants us to walk in a place of complete victory and mastery and dominion over Satan and all of his demon powers because of the cross. So how does this affect you and me in everyday life? Now, we, you and I understand that in this world, there's so much of evil going on, and this is perpetrated by Satan. Uh, 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 and he's using uh, the weakness of man. He's using the sin of man. Uh, and, 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 you know, it's like man and Satan are in hand to hand and causing all the evil that's, uh, that's in our world today. But as a believer, when you are confronted with what the, what the works of the devil. So he comes to test, uh, tempt us. He may attack us in different areas. Or you may see, uh, you may be confronted with his works where, when you're ministering to people. In all of these situations, you and I must approach the works of the devil with this confidence, with, with this assurance that Satan has been defeated and that as a believer, you have the authority to destroy his works. Now, most believers don't know that, and most believers don't operate out of that. You know, imagine if all the believers in the world would live out of this. You know, we would enforce Christ's victory over the works of darkness. And we'd be able to minister to so many people, setting them free from the, the oppressions of the enemy. But most believers don't know that. Most believers don't even live out of that. They don't enforce the victory of Jesus Christ on the, that Jesus gained on the cross over the works of Satan. But I want to challenge you because you are hearing the truth right now on this telecast, right out of God's word, that you and I must live out of that finished work of Christ on the cross, which includes victory, authority over Satan. Now, if the enemy is attacking you in some way, and maybe your finances, maybe your health, maybe your mind, maybe your emotions, maybe relationships. In any area, the enemy is trying to steal, kill, or destroy. You don't sit down there and take it. That's, that, that stance of passivity is not appropriate for a believer. The Bible tells us, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That means you've got to rise up and say, no devil, you're not going to do this in my life. I will not tolerate the work of evil spirits in my life. I will not tolerate what the enemy is trying to do in my mind or in my body or in my situation, my circumstances. I will not tolerate that. The Bible says resist. That means you don't put up with it, but you come on the offensive when you're dealing with the devil and his demonic powers. So resist the devil and say, and you do it knowing that authority is yours. You do it knowing Satan has to listen to you when you approach him in the name of Jesus Christ on the basis of the cross, the victory is already yours. The triumph the, um, is already yours. And you just have to operate out of that when you're resisting the enemy. The same thing is when you're ministering to people. You know, people come with all kinds of problems. The enemy is creating, uh, is working havoc in their lives, uh, uh, is trying to ruin their lives. Whether they are believers or not doesn't matter. It's the, the point is, it's the work of the devil. And you are here. Uh, even they've come asking for help, uh, you are here to minister to them 
in the authority of Jesus' name and because of the finished work of Christ on the cross. So when they come to you for help, they come to you for prayer, or you offer help in the name of Jesus, when you're dealing with the works of darkness, you got to deal with it knowing that Jesus Christ has defeated that demon, that evil spirit. He has defeated Satan. So whether that evil spirit is causing financial distress, uh, all kinds of other problems in their lives, you are there to destroy those works. And you have the authority to do it. You know, just before his ascension, in Matthew the 28th chapter, and in verse 18, Jesus said, All authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. Go therefore. Now again, I want you to think about this. Does this mean Jesus did not have all authority in heaven and earth before making that statement? Surely not. As the eternal God, as deity, all authority in heaven, in earth, and the entire universe already belonged to him. So what was the necessity of him making that statement in Matthew 28, 18? I mean, why would it even matter? Why would he have to make that statement? Because he was making that statement not as the eternal word, but he was making that statement as the incarnate with the one who had come as a man, who had represented you and me, and as a man had conquered Satan and triumphed over sin, sickness, Satan, and death. And now as a man, before he ascended into heaven, he's saying, now as a man, as representing each one of you, I'm saying all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. So can you imagine that, that the man Christ Jesus has been so highly exalted, he's given, been, been given a name that is above every name. And as a man, he said, all authority is given to me. Go therefore. That means you can now walk in all authority with the authority that Jesus Christ has gained right here as we live on this earth. We walk in that authority he has gained through the, his finished work. Now, of course, after that, Jesus ascended into heaven and he received the glory that he had with the Father before the earth, the world was. That is the glory of the deity. And today he is God. He's eternal God, the eternal word. We worship him and we honor him. But when he made that statement, all authority in heaven and earth is given to me, he was speaking as the, 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 uh, the glorified Son of God, or the Son of Man, and, uh, who had been resurrected, implying that you and I can walk in that same authority. He said, go therefore. So when you and I go today, we are going backed up with that authority over Satan and over all of his demons in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the way he wants us to live out of the finished work that he's provided for us through his death and resurrection. All People's Church is happy to announce the release of three new publications. Receiving God's Guidance, Offenses Don't Take Them, and Water Baptism. These are available for free. You can use these resources for your personal study or in small groups, churches and ministries. So download these at apcwo.org slash publications or request a free copy by writing to us at contact at apcwo.org. We trust that you've enjoyed this telecast today and it has opened up your heart and mind to a truth, a very important truth from the Word of God. I want to challenge you, encourage you to live on the basis of the finished work of Christ on the, of Christ on the cross. Walk in victory over Satan. I want us to take some time to pray together. And as I pray from here, I want you to believe that God will touch you right where you are. And if there are any works of the enemy troubling you, causing you distress, believe that as I pray, by the power of the Holy Spirit, it flows right through to you right now, those works will be broken. Let's pray. Father, because of the finished work of Christ on the cross, I take authority over every work of darkness that might be causing distress or problem to anyone watching or listening. Right now, I command you, Satan, I command you wicked spirits, take your hands off of those people listening. I destroy your works in the name of Jesus. Things that are troubling their minds, things that are troubling their lives, situations, their finances, their relationships, the situations at home. I command the evil works of the enemy to stop in Jesus' name. And I release the blessing of God in its place. 
So receive God's blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. And until next time, remember, live life to Jesus' way. Hi there, we're so delighted to introduce to you our free church app. Uh, this app is loaded with features and resources that will greatly enrich your life. So head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for All People's Church Bangalore and download the app right now. It's going to greatly enrich your journey with God.